Welcome to the Building Heroes Podcast, where we learn to build heroes in our homes to help our kids be prepared for their life journeys. Hi, I'm your host, Molly Christensen, and I love to encourage and mentor you on your path. Hello, welcome to the Building Heroes Podcast, episode 47. And I'm wondering how you're doing with your homeschool so far. Have you started homeschooling yet? I usually like to start after Labor Day because I'm like, you know, summer. I like it. Uh, But this week, it's before Labor Day. I decided to just start off with a bit of homeschooling. Just gently, nothing big. And that's because... We were preparing to start into this new family co-op, and there was just a few really simple things that I wanted to do, like a read aloud and watch a couple videos, read a short biography. And I figured it'd be fun, and it it shouldn't take long in keeping with my gentle start, right? Well, the idyllic snuggle on the couch while enjoying the book and eating our snacks and having a nice discussion did not happen. (laughs) I have been homeschooling now for over 20 years, and you know what? Sometimes the plans still don't work, even for me. So I don't want to throw my kids under the bus, but let's just say we had some bad attitudes going on and (laughs) some fighting. (laughs) And I don't want to throw myself under the bus either, but let's just say my response was not very mature and did not help. (laughs) So yeah, I got mad and I said, forget this, I'm out. And then I told them that they were gonna have to clean for an hour that day until their attitudes improve. And I also told them that they're just not gonna have any idea of what's going on. It's gonna be happening in our co-op the next day either. So you can kind of imagine their reaction to my response to them. They, they were not super happy. And let's just say it was not really the start that I wanted. (laughs) I quit homeschooling on the first day, you guys. I said, I'm out. (laughs) We'll just say the feeling in our home was not super happy. And I was like, you know, I might be a little tired for this now. Can I keep doing this? I should know this by now. All these things, you know. Don't worry, though. I did go back the next day and started again. But, it, you know, what really turned out was that we actually just learned some different lessons than what I was planning on. And that's OK, because sometimes that's just how it goes. You know, for some reason, I think that we think that when we make these plans for homeschooling, everything should go perfect. because We're excited about it. But then something, you know, happens and and. Somebody just wakes up on the wrong side of the bed or, you know, who knows? And so sometimes the lesson that we have to learn is just about apologizing to each other and trying again. And that's pretty much what we did. Now, I have to admit, I was pretty embarrassed by my reaction because I haven't actually flipped out like that for a long time. But I was really grateful to think about the fact that we could still reset and we could still try again. So, you know, we can keep building our relationships back up and keep going. Now, I don't know if you heard it, but a couple of weeks ago, I had a podcast guest, Ali Adair Chong, come on. And I just saw a quote that um, was by her that really applies here. And I like this a lot because it's kind of true. And this is what she said. She said, homeschooling is parenting on steroids, basically, right? Because if you're homeschooling, you are parenting all the day long, right? (laughs) But you're also having more time to build better relationships and become better yourself too. But you also have more time to make mistakes in front of the kids. (laughs) But you also have time to fix them and show their kids how that's done as well. So for many of you, many of you, you know what, probably all of you, (laughs) You know, you're going to run into a day just like I had the other day. And it might not be on the first day because often, you know, that excitement, a lot of newness, uh, that can carry you through for a few weeks. But it's going to happen. It's going to come. So kind of plan on it, really, because you're going to have a day. 
<laughs> and you're not going to react in the best way. And the kids are going to fight. You might yell at the kids and you might start to blame them and their bad attitudes and say, why can't they get along? Why can't I have the kids that actually like to learn and get excited? You know, uh, why can't I get kids that actually like each other? And then it keeps going. You know, you can do that whole thought spiral down. You're like, you can blame your husband because maybe he should do a better job of disciplining them. And never mind that he wasn't even home when this happened, you know? And then you start to feel that shame about how you reacted and how you're feeling your kids and that you're really not cut out for this. You know, it's a serious emotional roller coaster sometimes. Um, and that emotional roller coaster could be happening to you all the time. You know, even though you're on a roller coaster, you're not having fun. You want a hoss. And I totally understand this because the, this used to be me all the time. I had no idea how to get off. And I, you know, I was so tempted to send them back to school or just throw in the towel or whatever, right? Well, while that might have given me relief temporarily, it wasn't really going to solve the, the problem because the problem was actually me. You know, I didn't know it though. When I see that, the problem was me is because I thought I knew how to manage my emotions. But all I was really doing is just stuffing, stuffing everything inside of me so that ever so often it would just come up and out like a volcano, spew forth all over everything around me, including the kids that I was mad at, and even the kid that I wasn't mad at. The <laughs> poor thing <laughs> kind of got that spew as well. <laughs> But then, of course, because I hate doing that, I don't want to be that mom. I tried to blame, blame everyone else to justify, justify it to myself that it was okay, but it wasn't. So on that first day of our gentle homeschool start, I made a big mistake because I reacted to my kids and I was rude to them. I was mean to them and not that good mom that I wanted to be. You know, I, I realized that maybe I had been a little slack in helping my kids choose to be obedient. And I realized that our routine had been off and that some of them had been going to bed really late <laughs> and not eating well or drinking enough water. We had some of that tired hangry going on. I realized that I hadn't really cast the vision for what we were going to be doing this year. They didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I hadn't really explained it to them. And I also realized too that even though I have learned a little better how to manage my emotions, it's still probably going to happen sometimes. And so when it does, I'm going to have to apologize and I'm going to have to forgive myself and adjust and do better. But the beautiful thing is, is for me now, I don't do this every day or 10 times a day like I used to. So there is hope you can get better at this. So, you know, instead of going back into that volcano spew when we get upset at something and then into the blame cycle that just keeps bringing you down the more you buy into it I decided to <laughs> I did start down that path I'll have to say when this happened the other day I started going oh I'm the worst mom I'm so bad I just made my kids <laughs> two chores for an hour and clean because I was so mad at them and um you know but I just decided that I was going to take some deep breaths apologize and choose to do better. So that's what I did. I did apologize to the kids for my poor behavior. It was kind of funny because I, I was trying to talk to them and they didn't want to hear us because they weren't quite sure what the mom was going to do next. She's going to blow up again. You know, they weren't ready. So I just waited. And then later I had a captive audience, you know, like when you get them in the car and they can't get out while it's driving. Right. <laughs> So I was able to kind of open up the conversation then and chat with them a bit and help them better understand what we were trying to do and, and help them understand the vision and the expectations. Now, did I do this all perfectly? No, of course not. But I did it way better than I used to do it. And it also opened up the conversation where I found out that one of my kids had only eaten popcorn that day and it was 5 p.m., <laughs> no wonder the hangry came up, you know? And so then we started talking about, well, how can, how can we make our meals better? Because I knew I'd been really busy lately and I hadn't actually, you know, 
been on it lately. Now my kids are old enough that they can feed themselves, but sometimes it really just helps mom to have that routine and rhythm in there. And the kids had some really great suggestions. So I was excited for that. So we turn it into a problem solving thing instead of beat up ourselves and other people sort of thing. So even though we did quit homeschooling on that day and it was bad, we can try again. And that was actually a way more important lesson for us to learn than watching any YouTube video or reading a biography. Now, while we would like to have every single homeschool day look Pinterest perfect, with that loving mom bending over her diligent daughter who is happily working through her workbook, that's really not reality. <laughs> I was trying to think, you know, if I had a photographer following me around, would any of our homeschool pictures ever look like that? I'm not so sure, unless we posed for them, you know? Usually they're going to have a kid upside down or, you know, rolling on the floor or kicking his sister or whatever, you know, but somehow we still managed to get some things done. Now, um, if you are new at homeschooling, expect you're going to have days like this. And that's okay, because that's how we learn. All your days are not going to be perfect. And you're just going to have to learn different lessons some of the days and that's okay if you get off the schedule that you made it really is now if you've been homeschooling for a while I know it's really easy to think oh I should have this down by now I know that's easy to think because sometimes I think that right especially when you have a day like this I definitely thought it in this situation but I also knew that is a lie because why should you have it down by now are you totally perfect now no, of course not. And you're never going to be in this life because life is all about making progress, not being perfect. So the other thing is, too, is why you think maybe you should have it down by now. Your circumstances change on a daily basis. Your kids are older. You may have more kids. You may have kids who've moved out. You may be wiser in some areas, areas but maybe not in others. And you know what? Just the world keeps changing. Everything is still different. So every single day, you're doing something new that you've never done before. So, you know, whenever you are tempted to think, I should have this down by now, don't go there because you're still learning. <laughs> and all that does is put guilt on you. Now, you probably are better than you were before, which is great. And that's what we want to celebrate. So, you know, we do want to have days, um, or no, what I'm trying to say here is it's okay to have days like this once in a while. In fact, it's okay to have days like this all the time, but what isn't okay is beating yourself up over it. And what's not okay is not learning from it. And it's not, you know, if you keep repeating them so too much and hate it, and you want to get off that non-amusing roller coaster ride, then it just means that there is a good lesson for you to learn there. And so you got to learn it, right? Now, of course, it's going to be hard to learn because you haven't learned it yet. You don't know what you don't know yet, but there is always hope and you can always learn. So keep up the good work because raising good kids is one of the best works you can do. Keep building your, the heroes in your home. And if you want more help figuring this out, Look into the Heroes Journey membership because that's what we do. We're here to support you on your journey and help you progress. So please don't give up. You got this. Thanks for listening to the Building Heroes podcast. Can you help more people join the Building Heroes movement by sharing this podcast? More people can find it when you subscribe to the show, rate it, and leave a review. For more help on building heroes in your home, get the free Building Heroes resources at www.buildingheroesacademy.com.